Whenever retirees hear the word probate, they have the urge to avoid it at all costs. This may cause them to take steps that they believe are harmless and will allow them to avoid this process. Commonly, one of these steps is adding their adult children as joint owners on their bank accounts and some investment accounts. The idea being that they can continue to enjoy these assets while they're still alive, they can get their kids help managing the assets as they age, and when they eventually pass away, those assets can go around the estate. But what many retirees don't understand is the risks and issues that they are taking on when they make these changes. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the risks that go along with adding kids as joint owners on bank accounts and investment accounts. I'm gonna remove some of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt about the estate process, and I'm going to provide you with some better alternatives to help you achieve an efficient estate and help you in managing your affairs while you are still alive. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Mark Walhout, and I created this channel to share ideas and concepts that I'm using to help people with retirement every single day. If you want to get more videos like these, consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you're alerted when new videos are posted. So before we jump into the risks of adding your adult children as joint owners in your accounts, I'll tell you a story of a landmark court case in the province of Ontario that tells the story of some of the perils of joint ownership with adult kids. In the case Pecor versus Pecor, an aging father provided ongoing financial support to his daughter and her disabled husband and paid some expenses for their kids' university education. He opened several joint accounts with his daughter. He put all the money into the accounts, he controlled the accounts, and he paid all the taxes on the accounts. In his will, the gentleman made specific bequests to his daughter and her disabled husband, but he made no mention of the accounts that he opened. His will said that the residue of his estate was to be divided equally between the daughter and her disabled husband. Following the father's death, the daughter redeemed all the money out of the accounts. The daughter and her husband subsequently divorced. The husband argued that the money should be distributed as part of the estate. The daughter said that the money was a gift to her. The court's decision centered around a concept called the presumption of advancement. The court held that in the absence of proof, the general rule is that a transfer to an adult child is assumed to be held in trust. It is not assumed to be a gift. So what does this mean for Canadian retirees? What does this mean for people who are looking to add their children to their accounts to avoid this probate process? And the answer is by simply adding a child to an account like a bank account or an investment account, that doesn't mean that the asset will become their property after you pass away. The courts will assume unless there's clear proof in both behavior and in writing that the proceeds of the account are being held in trust for your estate, that it's not a gift. What that means is, the account will form part of your estate and be subject to the probate process and will be distributed according to the terms of your will. So you may go to the trouble of adding your kids' names to your accounts for nothing and also take on a number of very specific risks in the process. What types of risks are you taking on? Number one, you're taking on creditor risk. This action opens the account up to the child's creditors if the child were to be sued or subject to some legal action if they are a joint owner on an account that property can be opened up to that child's creditors the second is control risk this action may put you in a situation where you will need the consent of your adult child to either make changes to an investment account redeem money from an account you may need them as a sec second signature if you want to do something with that property that may go against your child's wishes number three is risk to your estate let's say that you have three adult children and you put the name of one of your adult children maybe the adult child that's closest to you geographically they live closest to you you put your accounts in joint names with that one child to help with administration you're opening yourself up to huge risks with your other kids when you pass away the child who's on the account will say that that money was a gift from mom and dad the other surviving children will say no that's part of the estate and open up a scenario whereby there would be a very bitter legal battle Number four is risk for the adult child being added to the account. The adult child being added to the account may fall into a false sense of complacency. When you pass away, they may think that the money in the joint account is all theirs. They spend it and then eventually there's a legal challenge by the other beneficiaries of the estate. So what are some better ways for you to manage this process? If you wanna have some assistance in managing your affairs while you're still alive, you wanna make sure that when you pass away that the estate process is handled smoothly. There are three steps here that you can take to help make sure that that process runs more smoothly for you. Number one is have up-to-date powers of attorney and communicate them to your family and use them properly. 
There's a lot of people that would prefer to take the risk of adding adult children to accounts and assets, but then they won't go out and visit with a qualified estate lawyer and get effective estate planning documents put in place. Having those effective estate documents in place can help you avoid a lot of these risks and have that process go more smoothly for you. The second step is you can consider using formal express trusts if you want to engage with a third party or a trustee to help you in managing your affairs and then also govern the process that would distribute your assets efficiently when you pass away. The step of setting up formal trusts will require you to engage with a lawyer and an accountant and it will require some ongoing tax compliance work that will need to be done on an annual basis. But the work and the costs associated with that to have the peace of mind that that process will be handled properly and efficiently is much more appealing than the idea of having your estate become a huge contentious issue when you pass away. And then number three finally is don't fear the probate process. The probate process is there to protect you and your beneficiaries as well as the trustee of your estate. The cost of probate in the province of Ontario where I live is 1.5% of the value of your estate assets over $50,000. So on an estate of $500,000, that works out to a one-time fee of $6,750. And the number of things that people will do that are incredibly risky to avoid that one-time penalty, it's unbelievable compared to the amount of work that it would take to just simply set up the proper documents, set up the proper structures to manage this process effectively. So I encourage you to think harder about how you are approaching the management of your affairs in your estate before you go ahead and add your adult children to assets like bank accounts, investment accounts, and other assets. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell icon so you're alerted when new videos are posted. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day. Take care.